So C2C2, also known as Cas13A, it's a CRISPR protein, and it's kind of like Cas9, but it's also quite different in the sense that it targets RNA instead of DNA. Back when we first characterized the enzyme biochemically, we would see that it would cut its RNA based on the sequence of the CRISPR RNA so that you could reprogram it. But what we would also see is that when it recognized its target, it was also chewing up other RNAs in, that were you know, around the RNA. So we gave it a name, called it the collateral effect of the enzyme. We thought you could use this non-specific activity um, as a way to, to report uh, whether or not the RNA target is present. When we first started to realize that the collateral diagnostic test had a high sensitivity, we actually thought back to Jim Collins' work. Fung and his team reached out to us after we published our Zika piece and came to us with their ideas about using this CRISPR component as the basis for very broad diagnostic. Sherlock is a different application of a CRISPR system, using CRISPR not for editing the genome, uh, but to detect and diagnose uh, biological material. So Sherlock is an acronym and it stands for Specific High Sensitivity Enzymatic Reporter Unlocking. Sherlock takes as input a single molecule of DNA or RNA. Our amplification reaction can turn that small input into a large amount of DNA. We can then use this amplified DNA to create even more RNA. cas a can recognize this RNA and amplify the signal again, generating a detectable readout. As we were developing the diagnostic uh, protocol, uh, we thought it would be great to uh, test this in real-world applications. So we talked to Pardis, we talked to uh, Deb Hung, and working with them, we were able to apply this uh, in real clinical samples. We were actually working with people in Pardis' group to diagnose the levels of Zika in actual urine and uh, serum. We take the, the actual raw serum or urine, and then we can input that into our Sherlock reaction. And so in the matter of just a couple hours, we're actually able to detect very low levels of Zika in actual human blood or urine. Zika is a particularly challenging uh, virus to diagnose because it's often at very low copies. There's not that much of it circulating in your body, um, even if you're getting quite sick. And so there's not that many copies, so it's really hard to pick it up. You need a test that's really, really sensitive. I think what we have here is really now a DNA-RNA equivalent for the pregnancy test with a, a platform that can uh, lead to a, a point-of-care diagnostic, give you a, a very specific readout quite quickly. Diagnostics in the infectious disease field is actually very unique um, from diagnosing uh, any other disease, and that is that time is of the essence. People die, even with each passing hour in some cases, if we can't make the correct diagnosis. That's what is potentially attainable with Sherlock, is a diagnostic that is rapid, that will give us you know, almost immediate information to guide our management to patients. If Sherlock can help to diagnose and, and prevent uh, uh, spread of disease, um, then I think that would be, that would be really impactful. It's technologies like Sherlock that are just game changers for our ability to uh, identify infectious diseases around the world with sensitive tests and tests that don't require a lot of complicated processing to go through. That's exactly what the world needs.